Been long enough. Uh, 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 yep, it's been long enough. New video of this game, and, uh, yeah. It's been a few days. Yeah, it's been an, it's been a few days. It's, it's fucking 19th now. Yeah. Okay, day six it is. Neat. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'm gonna do this real quick. Oh. I wanna voice that line, thank you. <laughs> mm hmm. All right, uh, there we go. Booyah. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get into this. Day six. Uh, day, day five was like the whole thing with June. June's parent, with, yeah, seeing June's parents for the first time. Mm hmm. My memory's correct. Morning. As soon as I walk into the classroom, I see a few friendly faces of other classmates that have gotten here first. Oh, it's Ayako, of course. Good morning, Alex. She smiles warmly at me, taking her eyes off of the person she was talking to to greet me with a wave. Do you have any news on the thing I should look into? Sorry, not yet. My friend said he'd get look into it, give me an answer by the end of the week. You asked him to look into a thing? Please, tell me it's not more, it's not more playing cards. Well, what's happening here? Kyoko grimaces, looking between the two of us with annoyance. Oh, sorry, Kyo-chan. I thought you were there. I thought you were there for a second. We were just talking, not thirty seconds ago. Don't just casually forget about me. Uh, I see you two as inseparables ever, huh? Are you mocking me? No, no, nothing like that. Sorry, Kyo-chan. I'm just excited about the possibility of Axton giving me those rare ones I've been looking for. Kyoko sighs, pressing the palm of her hand against her face, completely covering one of her eyes. Yes, I was right. It really is the playing cards. They're, they're not just playing cards, Kyo-chan. They're vintage collector's items from field, tr field trading card. Kyoko is rough, not shalotly. Of course, uh, this is like Pokemon type shit, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. It's definitely bizarre. <laughs> I've never understood the obsession with Pokemon cards anyway, like, what, what do they do exactly? They just sit there, taking up space. Yeah, yeah, vintage, vintage cards from trading card games that failed decades ago. They're super defined and hard to find the market. Honestly, why do I still bother with you? And Neko Nishi-san sighs in exasperation. Oh, that's so sweet, right now my speech by heart. I really don't understand how two people could be so completely different from each other and yet be such good friends. Yes, I see the irony. I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say. Well, I promise I'll keep you updated. If he manages to find it before the end of the week, I'll send you a message. All right, I'll be waiting anxiously for it then. You really need to get out more, Aya-chan. <laughs> well, at least they're good friends despite their differences. That's admirable in and of itself. I guess so. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, it's this fucker. Just a couple steps away, I'm greeted by the soft smile. This big lag. Wow. Okay. Good morning, Alex. I don't remember what voice I gave this fucker. Honestly, it's weird. He's casually snacking on a jumbo bag of chips. Of course. Of course. Honestly, he's been eating most of the time anyway. It's already become pretty normal to see him like this. Well, wow, there are a few flakes stuck to his chin. Ew. Should I tell him about them? These are the recipe you gave me. It's tried last night. It was great. God, you liked it. What did Jin have to say? He. I can answer that. I do remember what voice I gave him. Wow, Jin, your face looks terrible. What happened to you? Your recipe happened to me. My recipe? You didn't like it? That, that's not the point. He made so much of it, over 10 pounds, and he made me eat it all. Dear God, he made me eat it. Wow. Uh, that sounds a bit bad. That, that's bad. For feeding me, nah. <laughs> no, thank you. Fuck that. These two people, man. How are you still alive right now? Oh, come on, Jin, it wasn't that bad. 
I ate four pounds of food in a single sitting. No one should be able to eat that much food. No one. Well, there's no way to be able to have an actual conversation with them. It's too riled up right now. And you actually had a pot big enough to cook all that food in at once? Don't just brush me aside. It's fine, Jin. Everything worked out okay in the end, right? Jim pats his brother in the back. The, why are these names the same? Why would you do that? <laughs> these, two, these people's parents just hated them. <laughs> are you crazy? I was sick on the... Jin starts filling the stomach as his whole body starts trembling. I think it's gonna take a week to digest all that food. But wasn't it delicious? That's besides the point. You're supposed to eat so much you feel sick. What's wrong with that? Screw this, I need to lie down. Wow. That's... Uh. <laughs> well, let them do it. They're brotherly love on their own. In fact, I think Jin is just about ready to throw up a bunch of brotherly love on Jin's shoes. I hope to God that most of like Pataki never turns out like that. Well, just sit around until class starts. God, even though I'd, I, I've only known him for a short while, I can safely say that this place is really boring without June around. Where is he anyway? Time's not ready. Is it that early still? I feel it's out my shoulders around to see who it is. Oh, it's Ryoji, of course. <laughs> ah, Ryoji, good morning. Bernard's handing me a small disc case. It's the one you asked for. Short in words as always. Reach up and pick up the case, seeing the name Blaster Punisher 4 stamped on it. Oh, for a little cover. Thank you, Shoji. Weren't you still playing this one, though? Finished last night. It was decent. Uh, the critics called this one a contender for Game of the. Don't trust the critics! The critics are fucking shills. They said Last of Us 2 was Game of the Year. Fuck that nonsense. nods once more. There were no romance options. Oh my fucking god. It's a shooter. All games should have romance options. <laughs> oh god. Wait a second there, Kuma-chan. Really? Kuma? That's, that's a reference to Tekken, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's the game. But that, that oh, whatever. Class rep seemingly materialized out of thin air, having overheard us and deciding to button to our conversation. Please don't call me Kuma-chan. For the first time, Kumagawa looks away from his console and glances at the cla at class rep with a very bored look. But his range of facial features is very limited, so I'll just consider that to be a glare. A game doesn't need a, a game doesn't need romance options to be entertaining. No, a game is strategy. That's why TCGs are the best. Charlie you and you was able to see that. Wow. God, I don't envy Gate. Ugh, I hate that bullshit. Just fucking let people enjoy their... Well, you can criticize them. You can criticize games using the objective measures you're able to criticize things with, but don't just fucking bash people for what they like, regardless of if it's good or... You get what I'm saying. Trading card games are nothing more than an excuse to sell ridiculous amounts of merchandise you don't even need in order to keep playing. Big talk come from a guy who's bought the last six expansion packs to love me seriously. If we're talking about games, then what about sports ones? They're the best. Ew. Then she's up the second intruder, butting in our conversation. Might as well turn this into open discussion with the whole classroom. Ryoji and the class rep both shoot a murderous looks. I literally did too. Fuck sports games. <laughs> eh, sorry, sorry. Jin hides behind his brother, using him as a shield. Okay. No offense, but if a mean look is all it takes to frighten you that much, I don't see you working out as an athlete. <laughs> okay, here's a little known fact about me. Well, a fact that I think is important to know. If you're going to be on the internet, and you get offended so easily by someone calling you a name or a slur or something like that, you should get off the fucking internet, because it's going to happen all the time. Period. Doesn't matter how many safeguards you put in place, it's going to happen. People that are fucking that thin of skin shouldn't get on the internet. Expansions have actual content. Card games are just re-release the same thing every time. 
Oh, really? So you're saying those expansion packs didn't release a bunch of bunch more busty girls with daddy issues and endless sexual appetite? No, no, it was brand new content, right? Kumagawa's cheeks immediately turned red. Hey! Oh, come on, you know she's right. Yeah, but still, cheap shot. Last rep smiled in triumph. Well, my job here is done. If you'll excuse me, boys, I need to convince Ko Kyoko that I don't waste my money by buying trading cards instead of expensive Gucci handbags. Okay, yeah, I think trading cards are way better than that bullshit. <laughs> okay, what the hell just happened? Women can be such a pain in the ass at times. Okay. Everyone can be a pain in the ass, you sexist pig. Lol, just kidding. He grumbles something that I can't quite understand. I merely smile and nod. Don't worry, big guy. Sure, I'm sure the feeling is mutual. Thanks. With, the snide, with that snide comic completely flying over his head, Kumagawa walks away from with his console still on hand, not bothering to look at anything other than the screen. Wow. By the way, Michimiya. Jinichiro suddenly pops up out of nowhere, nearly giving me a heart attack. <laughs> oh, Christ, Jin! How does your size get to be so stealthy? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm no Kobayashi's coming to class today. I don't know. He's not exactly the most punctual person out there, but... Hey, he doesn't tend to be this tardy either. At least he's certainly always arriving earlier than me. Is this something that happened yesterday? Most likely. You know what I know about his parents with the rest of the game? They're extremely protective. Like, they're fucking helicopter parents to the max. Oh god, I might have been more serious than just letting on. And with that, we're on the back of my L. I'm sure I'll be ready, but really protective for the rest of the day. Oh, it's, it's this dear boy again. He's cute. Shima Sensei walks in the room carrying a giant stack of books in his arms. The echo of books being dropped in the table resounds across the entire room. Ooh, what book is it? No longer human? Um. Some of Murakami? Look at. Uh, <laughs> Damn, this be one very strong table. All right, everyone, settle down. You have so much to cover today, and with so little time, let's not waste it with pointless conversation. Everyone rushes to their seats, without missing a beat, since they start to take it, start to take attendance. Kumagawa, here. Nezumiro. I, I can't do both the voices at one time. Uh, whatever you keep. Yeah. It's been three years. You know how this works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this game of theirs used to be amusing at first, but it's already become quite a drag to hear it every day. The hours seem to lag by, taking their sweet little time to move. I go over the clock every now and then. Even though it feels like an eternity, the hands on the clock barely move. I am officially bored out of my mind. You know, that's really interesting. What one thing I found I I've always found really intriguing about like this whole like a bunch of what I was saying. But basically if you're walking on the side of the road, you're mo you're moving through time slower than someone driving in a car. So technically if you're in a car, you're time traveling in a way. It's weird. I look over to the empty seat next to me where June was supposed to be. Even though it's probably nothing, I can't help but be worried. Told me it was nothing. You wouldn't have lied to me, right? Uh, dude, if it, my friend, if you're watching this, oh boy, you're you're in for a real treat. Uh huh. Started to resent her husband after he'd most of their children, so she hid their youngest in the hopes that would. Oh, this is Zeus. This is Cronus and Zeus, in the hopes that one that he, well, he would one day bring down his father. History lessons? No, that's not history. This is fucking mythology, dude. Shima Sensei is in charge of doing the social lessons this year. Now it's talking about his favorite topic, mythology. The class was supposed to be about Japanese feudal history, mind you, but Shima Sensei does do whatever he wants without consequences. And I get the feeling I've already heard this lecture a million times over the years. Everyone immediately looks like it was suddenly opened. Um, excuse me. Jin opens the door, peering through the little crack he opened. Since they blinks a few times in confusion. Kobayashi, you're... He looks up at the clock. 
You're almost two hours late for class. I've already put you down as absent for the day, so you might as well wait outside for your next class. No, I already have enough trouble with the subject without missing class. Seamus Sensei rubs his head, I can, r r rubs his forehead and, le and leans against his table. Then next time, please think about that before coming over so late. Just get to your seat already. I'll change your absence record later. Yes! June nods, rudely rushing towards his seat. As soon as he approaches, his eyes lock on to me. Where were you? I silently mouth something off to him, hoping he could read my lips. He shoots me a nervous look and mouths back. Tell you later. Once June has taken his seat, Seamus and Sleek clears his throat. Well, as I was saying, afraid for children, Rhea came up with a plan together with Gaia to save her youngest, Zeus, giving birth to him in an ice little ocean and... Wait, excuse me, Sensei, is this, shouldn't this class be about Japanese history? She must Sensei stops his explanation once again, scowling. Yes, Kobayashi, I know what it says on the schedule, but I decided this was more important, so I'm giving you, giving you classes on ancient history. But... Ancient history! Fucking hell. Oh god. Shima Sensei pings on the table with his paw, making a noise so loud that we nearly jump over our seats. Can't blame June for not knowing. Shima Sensei definitely has his quirks, and his passion for ancient tree anthology is second to none. But he gets really pissed off if you try to stop him giving class on that subject. Did, did, did I say something wrong? June leans over and whispers to me. Everything you said there was wrong. Is he always like this? Should have seen her in last year's Chinese history fiasco. I think Gimagawa still has the scars where the whip hit him. D you're joking, right? Sure. Kobayashi! Yes? Oh boy. Fua, <laughs> Shima says he looks super pissed off. Maybe you shouldn't be paying watching this class. You already know you already know so much of this subject, you should feel comfortable not to pay attention. Oh, you know what? How about a little test? I'm sure this one will be really easy for you, since you already know so much. Answer me this. Where do the gods of the Greek pantheon reside? Ah, yes, Mount Olympus. Uh... June is sorry able to respond. He shoots me a pleading look. The teacher isn't really looking at me right now. Fuck, go, go, get it. Mount Olympus. Shima senses his face go slack, staring at the tiger with a complete look of shock. And he cracks a content smile, seemingly pleased at this turn of events. Not a pleasant surprise. I suppose there is hope for you after all. Thank you. Shima sensei gives a small reverence to Jun, which restarts his lesson. And thank you. You're welcome. Alright, but that still doesn't mean you get to get, get away without paying attention. Cut the chat of you two. Yes, sir, I... Ah, la, 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 la. Thank God it's already a lunch break. <laughs> She's speaking up, speaking not like this is not okay. I should try to be a little more attentive from now on. Nah. Alright, class, I want you to review some of what I've just ex I've explained to you before, because this will certainly put part of our midterms. Just make sure you study and you should do all do well. <laughs> really? You're supposed to be teaching fucking Japanese history and you're teaching mythology? Why? How is he still working here? Exactly. <laughs> she was since he walks out of the class as students start getting up. Some people start leaving the class, whilst others just sit and chat, bringing out their lunchboxes. We're finally back to having a cool, relaxed atmosphere. Hey, Alex, I'm on feet together. You seriously don't need to ask me that every time. Sure, take a seat. I think science so Luigi should arrive in a bit. As if on cue, as if they were on cue, the door to our class is violently opened by a super high strung sign as she and Suichi walk inside. Yo! Yo. Nah, I survived! So I plops herself down in a chair without bothering to say anything else, immediately slatching on her desk. Rough day? Sai nods, her head buried in her arms. Suichi pulls up a chair to sit down, she looks at a guttural groan. Really rough day then. Sai looks up with sadness. I was late to class this morning and Katsuguri sensei shooting me out. She forced me to stay at, stand outside our class holding two buckets full of water. He does it anyway, what is this, a shonen manga? Well, she is very old fashioned, so I'm not really surprised. What happened today? You, te you tend to always be on time, that's like the only good thing about you. 
Watch it, Arata. Sailor at Suisha making him grin. Seems this is the exact reaction he was hoping to get out of her. I got into some trouble on the way to school and got held up. Where? In... In the police station? You got held up in a police station the first thing you mentioned with being late to class? I, I don't want to remember it, okay? Siberia's her face and her hands again and grows another time. This is the long ones we spent in this fucking classroom, I swear. By this point, Sai's already been so let everyone in the surrounding seats is staring at us. Class rep walks up to check in the source of the commotion. Ah, Sai chan, boy troubles. I can go get Kyoka if you want. She smiles warmly at Sai, and looks up with downcast eyes. No, no, I wish it were boy troubles. Me and Juicy say I got in trouble with the police. Sai nearly jumps up from her seat. <laughs> Kobayashi-kun! What? Gene seems to be completely oblivious to what just happened. Yeah, he doesn't have the best social cues. My, my, in trouble with the police, Sayachan. What did you do? If the classroom was out bothered by it, she didn't show the smallest trace of it. Instead, her eyes betrayed nothing. The fox, I can never read them. It's, it's too bad. I, I, I might have broken someone's phone. Wow. Even Sweet is taken back by her sudden confession. My, my, that's very violent, even for you, Sayachan. Well, yeah, it was a misunderstanding. Care to walk us to what happened? Well... I glanced over towards us, expecting... One of us to interject and change the subject, but none of us does, she sighs. I, I took the train to school like I usually do every morning. I ended up sitting in front of a boy from the school and an old man. I was just minding my own business listening to some music on my phone. When I thought I heard the sound of a camera, I looked around and saw him holding up his phone. I thought he was taking pictures of me, and... Wait, who did you see holding the phone? The boy or the old guy? What difference does it make? Well, if it was a kid asking pictures of you, the best you could do was ask for his school to take disciplinary action. If it was an adult, on the other hand, you could file charges against him. Sai so seems to ponder on this for a few seconds of side once more. Not now that it matters anyway. I took the phone out of his hand and smashed it on the floor. I got really pissed. Wait, who got really pissed? The boy! Junkao is in his chair. Sai so clears his throat. Anyway, we called the police, and once we stopped the next station, and we got taken to the police apart where they questioned me about it. I explained what happened, and they called my mother, saying I couldn't just destroy personal property willy-nilly. Wow, they didn't say anything about him taking pictures of you? Well... I have a bad feeling about this. Turns out, he wasn't taking pictures of me. His phone didn't even have a camera. I knew it. <laughs> Seems like the story was... I can't laugh. Unless I'm actually in a mood to laugh. Sorry, I don't care. Seems like the story was too much for Suichi to take as he explodes in a fit of thunderous laughter. She and class rep both pat her on the back, trying to reassure her. That was an honest mistake, Saya Chan. Just try not to jump to conclusions next time. I had to buy, I had to give him a new phone. I was pissed. She'll take my next paycheck to cover the cost of the phone as punishment. It's not fair. My paycheck is twice the price of that shitty phone. You seem to care more about your paycheck than you do his phone. Wait, but why should I have to buy him one? Because you broke his. That's his fault for taking pictures of me. Except he didn't. Gah! Jin gives Sai a short pat on the shoulder. Well, I guess nothing terrible, terribly bad happened then. If you'll excuse me, Kyoko was with the evil eye for ditching her to come over here. See ya. Thank you, Aya-chan. Echo smile, nods, smiling. She wasn't kidding. Kyoko really is glaring at us. That girl can be really scary when she's annoyed. Sometimes I wish I had a female best friend. Sighs, 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 just showing her hand and pouting. So do I. Before I have time to react, Saya reaches up into a lunchbox, grabbing a piece of meat and throwing it at Suichi, who ducks out of the way. My tuna! Saya reaches towards, but ew, why you eat tuna? It's just nasty. Yeah, but I quickly snatch it away, hold it up in the air away from her. Jun Lee gets up and steals a piece from it. Thanks. Hey! Hey, don't you know how disrespectful it is to waste food like this? 
Dinichiro's towering figure appears before Sai and scolds her. Sorry. Sai glares at Suichi, on the edge of falling to the floor in a fit of laughter. Leave my food alone for crying out loud. She had an annoyed look at June. Mm, it's really good. She's taunting me now. I relent, sighing. Glad you think so. Here, let me try some too. They quickly whisk my lunchbox away as Suichi reaches for it. Relax, I'm just kidding. Hey, by the way. Two points his chopsticks at us with his mouth so commonly be full of food that I can see his cheeks bulging. Takes a few long uh, bites before swallowing. Did you guys see the announced new game for the Monster Tamer series? It's been over three years since the last one. Ah, uh, yes, of course. A Monster Hunter reference. Where's <laughs> Keisuke? You should be here, shouldn't you? Oh, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of that series. Alex hates it, though. How? Why would you hate Manta? She thanks a lot, Suichi. That dinosaur pushed me out of the mountain, okay? Dinosaur? There are, no, there are no dinosaurs in Monster Tamer. I think he's talking about the EMB Slitheros, who looks like a dinosaur. Go from a chair in surprise. Oh, it's this per It's Ryoji again. Ryoji walks up to us still. Absent my elite in a sandwich. Oh yeah, that one. I've never successfully hunted him before. So I went over to June. What's an EMB? Judo was about to answer, but was quickly cut off by Kawa, who is now staring intently at Saya. It stands for Elite Boss Monster. They're the main objectives in Monster Hunter. You have to find them, study them, discover what they do, and don't act like. And don't like, so you can successfully tame them. Some must tamers affectionately call hunting. Yeah, that's. I'm surprised you know all about that other stuff, Junko. I've never seen you carrying a portable around. I uh, I used to bother my father's former roommates constantly. One of the reasons I'm so sad about the new Aspen too. The new game is only for home consoles, so I can't easily borrow someone else's. I told you yesterday you could borrow mine. Yeah, but I didn't want to assume. Assume what? That I meant it? In that case, it's alright to assume. Sorry. Well, Alex, when, when can I go to your place to get it, then? Well, I'm coming out house after class. I can give it to you so you can take it home, then. Um, you might want to take it to his house yourself. Switchy chimes in, talking over a raised eyebrow. Why? Well... He shoots a glance at June and just looks back and forth between the two of us with a curious look. I immediately get the message. Ah, you're right. Do not trust June with that boring cargo. Eh? Yeah. He shoots about the quizzical look that we mostly ignore, pretending not to notice. Let's drop by my place and I'll walk you to your house from the council. Why? You're just getting more trouble that way. It's no trouble, really. But... What are your plans for today? Both of our courts are still closed down until the end of the day, so I suppose you guys will have to have to do something else, right? Sweetie, nice save. Uh, this conversation doesn't interest me anymore. Bye. Well, he sure is blunt. To be honest, I was thinking of running a private court for the day and practicing my basics. That's actually a great idea. I'd tag along, but I've already booked a shift for today after class. God knows I need the money right now. Hey, why don't you take Rishara along? He could help you practice. That's... an idea. Oh, that's a great idea. You, you, you two could play a match against each other. No, no, let's not get too hasty. You know that's what he'd want to do t want you to do. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Why, why don't you want to play... Why don't you want to play about... Why don't you want to play against Keisuke-san? When I'd almost forgotten that June was here, he suddenly chimes in. Well, it's just that his play style is really annoying. Playing against him is infuriating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the idea. You know, it wouldn't be so... It wouldn't be so bad if you actually had a basic grab on any strategy other than... Bang! Ball really powerful on their side. Okay, first of all, I don't sound like that. Second of all, shut up. You see, this is your problem. Arushara is probably the player most similar to Tanabe in all of Japan. You should be getting as many tangents with him as you can sh as you can to try and practice against that specific type of player, but instead just bitch about how, how annoying it is. Oh, Soichi, I thought we agreed we'd be gentle with confronting him on this. Oh, I am being gentle. I have quite a few choice excellences that I decide not to use on this occasion. Simon's wound her under her breath looking away from Soichi. Well... What? Nobody responds this time? 
Seriously, Alex, I know this bothers you, but you have to stop doing that. Every time something becomes remotely hard, you start looking for an excuse to run away. But that's not true. I've never run away from tennis. No. Instead, you just quit the high-profile club you used to practice in, rejected all the private coaching offers you received, cut ties with all of your sponsors, and won't accept any requests from the high-ranking players to practice. Are you really just, are you really happy just wasting away your talents at a second-rate tennis club when you know you could do better? Hey. Oh, shut up, it's true. So I grumbled something under her breath, but the only word of it I managed to catch is a curse that word I'm not too comfortable repeating. How long have you felt this way? For a long time already, ever since you felt our number two ranking, and started doing this crap. Instead of you're doing your best to catch up, you're just lagging behind and letting your other rivals catch up to you. Ah, ha 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 Pot calling the kettle black, eh, Suichi? Pot calling the kettle black, fucker. You and your I don't want to be a volleyball pro. Oh no. <laughs> Fucking jackwad. It's just, it's ridiculous. It. <laughs> Used to be untouchable, Japan's rising star, the biggest hope for Japanese tennis. Now you use a couple now that you lose a couple of times to, to a really tough rival and decide to shut yourself off. Look, I'm sorry for being curt with you, but I've been holding a lot of this in for a while. I've tried being patient with you, hoping you'd find your way again, but you just keep repeating the same bullshit over and over again. I thought after the conversation we had a few weeks though that you'd finally start to change. I thought you were getting there after Morisaki showed up to practice with you, and yet you're here making excuses again. I look around the table, sighs face contorted in a, in a complicated expression. June is a mile, million miles away, looking off into the distance, perturbed by our sudden argument. Do you think so, too? I look in the eye and ask her. She struggles on my gaze, eventually looking down at the floor. Yes, Coach, Coach and I have been trying to motivate you since you first joined school. We, we thought getting more Senk, Surasaki, and a few other low-ranking pros over here would help motivate you, and it seemed to have. You improved a lot in that week they spent here. It's been years since I've seen you playing that way, but then as soon as they were gone, you just started doing the same thing again. So you knew Coach was going to do that? You planned it with him, and you pretended to be surprised about it? Yeah, kinda. I see. Put the little my lunchbox to get from my desk. Alex, wait! I just want to be alone right now, okay? I turn around and leave the classroom. No one follows me. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna stop here and comment on a few things. Okay, no one, everything they said there was true. Number two, I fucking love how the main character here is actually a main character. He has his own character, he has his own struggles, he has his own, like, motivations. He's not just a fucking blank slate. I'm so sick of that bullshit. I'm so sick of that bullshit in these, in these games. Like, again, it helps for some people to, like, get into the world, but fuck's sake, they're so boring. They react in ways you never would, ever, and they're just, bleh. There's a reason why I like Echo, and Burroughs, and Tennessee and others, because the main characters in them are actual characters. They're not just a cardboard cutout. Whatever, I don't want to get angry over this. The warm spring air is comfortable. A quiet breeze ruffles through my fur every now and then. I'm just sitting on the floor, looking up at the clouds as they pass by. Even though the sky is so clear, my mood right now is, temp is tempestuous. I love that's a good word. That's a good word. The sound of the door wakes me from my days. I guess I've been lost in thought for a while. This can't be a teacher. Lunch break ended a few bit minutes ago. Everyone should be in cl their classes right now. Suichi, then? I hear, the I hear the sound of footsteps. No, it can't be Suichi. He knows I like to hide behind the vent. He'd have come straight here. Whoever it is, this person wandering around as if looking for something. Ah. I can see recognize that voice. Look to my side, and I see June looking over at me with worry. He frees in the spot for a couple of seconds before finally taking a few stiller steps towards me. What are you doing here? You should be in class. I look away. Yeah, well, so should you. Shin sits down on the floor next to me, trying to look at the sky as I am doing. I don't really feel like going to class right now. I get the feeling I just space out the rest of the day. 
you sit in silence for a couple of minutes. I glance at June's profile every now and then, and I see him with a complicated look in his face, struggling to find words. Eventually, manage to find them. I, I don't really know what has been going on. I haven't known you guys that long, but I get the feeling that's not the kind of discussion you should have had with in front of an outsider like me. You're not out. I am. But that's not what I came here to talk to you about. Jin sighs, staring at his feet with pursed lips. I don't even know what I want to talk to you about. I didn't really think this through. I just got the feeling that I needed to say something. I thought maybe it'd come to me when I saw you. <laughs> Look at me, I'm rambling. Sorry, Jun kun I'm not in a very good mood right now. Could you get to the point? I... I don't really understand the argument you guys were having, but it seemed serious. I guess, I guess it just doesn't sit well with me. I can sort of understand. They basically said you haven't working your best lately, and I can see how that would be upsetting, but is it really that bad? I look over at June again, expecting to see a, con a, con a contemptuous, contemptuous look in his face. Instead, all I see is curiosity and worry. Damn it, he's too pure. I, I don't really talk about it that much nowadays, but what Suiji said is true. Up until middle school, I used to be known as the number one player in my age group. Even then, sports, sports critics were already labeling me, the, labeling me the next Japanese star. I had countless practice parties from all over the country. A multitude of coaches wanting to work with me, tons of companies wanting to sponsor me. I had everything. I also had this particular rival, Takagi Tanabe back. Then, he was only the sixth in the national rank, but he was climbing fast. We had met for the first time a year before we played against each other for the, for the first time. It was a lopsided win for me. But when we met again in the next tournament, it wasn't easy. I got the win, but it, it was difficulty, and I got real difficult, but I got really happy about it. All the other players of my age group report nearly in the same level as me. I know that's a horrible thing to say. It's true. I had gone undefeated for over four years. Eventually, I got in touch with Tagagi again. We started a friendly rivalry. Tagagi from the south and Michimiya from the north. It was just like the sort of thing you'd seen in shonen manga. You have no idea how happy I was. We talked to each other frequently, shared details about our train schedule, and eventually talked about our personal lives. He was my first tennis friend in a long time. But what about Mitsuguchi-san? I can't help but smile a bit. Sai is nice, but she's a girl. We don't play in the same category, so there's no sense of rivalry between us. It's just not the same. Anyway, back then, I got, you got, I got used to all the attention. I got used to being called the best, and eventually, I led myself to believe the same. I thought I was the best player in Japan, that no one could ever get me a... Oh, that's a bad thought. That's a bad mindset. During the U15 national tournament in my second year, I got matched up with, with Takagi again. I think that was our fourth or fifth match. I don't quite remember. I was feeling a little bit nervous, because every time I played against him, he seemed to be so much better than the previous time. I saw him clawing his way towards me, and frankly, that terrified me. But still, I convinced myself there was no way I could lose, and that that was that. Went to the match 100% sure I'd win. And? What do you think? I lost. I lost big time. It was down to the wire between us. We were to tie break in the end of the final set. The match had gone on for four hours. Over four hours. We were both exhausted. I... I caved first. I couldn't keep up the pace, and Takagi managed to steal the win away from me. I was upset, but I convinced myself it was just a stroke of bad luck. The sports magazines, on the other hand, they didn't seem to think so. A bunch of articles were printed out. I still remember the headline from one of them. Is this the end? Alex Michimiya finally beaten. Frankly, it's a little sick how much attention they were drawing to a bunch of 15-year-old wannabe athletes, but I guess that's kind of the crap, that's not the kind of crap that sells. From then on, Takagi and I got matched up against each other a handful of times in my senior year. Got defeated every time. And each time we played against each other, the difference just increased. I... I broke. You have no idea how shaken up I was. I completely lost confidence in myself. My practice started to suffer and I started to climb. Suddenly, I couldn't feel confident in the court anymore. My play became sloppy. Started to lose to players who had never, never even gotten close against my level before. That was the end of it. Child stars no more. I was officially considered a thing of the past. I cut up my contact with all those fancy things I had. Sponsors, coaches, clubs, partners, everything. Hell, even my school life started to suffer. You believe that? Back in the day, I used to tutor Suichi. 
I was an honors student, straight A's, student council, all of that. Stuck in a rut, barely on anything, something in my last year of middle school. Took everything I had just to desperately hold on to the number two spot, but each and every time the difference between me and him continued to widen, and the other players in my age group started to get closer and closer. Can't confidently say that I could go pro the way I am right now. And Suichi was right. Completely 100% right about everything. It's just... I've been turning a blind eye to it for a long time. It's just so miserable having to acknowledge it. I shouldn't have gotten mad at them, but I suppose that I just wasn't ready to get the truth around my face like that. Jesus Christ, man. Wow. Oh, boy. Lots of stuff. Lots of fucking stuff just drops. Oof. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I, I was meaning by having the mindset that you're the best and no one can beat you. That's what I meant by that being bad, because once you get in that mindset, it's going to ruin you if you do lose. I mean, at least if you, like, were going on the assumption that you could be beat, that there was a possibility of that happening... You wouldn't, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be so shaken by losing, but since he did have that mindset, he fucking collapsed. I mean, there's also burnout, but I don't, that's not really what, that's not it. I sigh, staring up at the sky. I really am pathetic. I don't think so at all. If it's affected you that much, if, if it's affected you that much, then that just means it's very important to you. There's nothing shameful about that. I believe that as long as you truly love what you do, there's nothing wrong with being depressed or being knocked down. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Shun stands there, breathing heavily for a few seconds. I myself am completely caught in a daze. Did I just get yelled at by June? Uh, what? No, I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> what is it? It's just... Okay, I, I, I can't force myself. Yeah. Oh, well, I must really be annoying him right now. No, seriously, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, I haven't laughed like that in a while. I'm really sorry, Jen, I wasn't laughing at you, promise. It's just, man, if even you're stabbing at me, then I guess I really overdid it, huh? L what's that supposed to mean? I mean nothing by it, I promise. Thanks a lot, June. I guess I really needed to hear that. Twist my hand on top of his head, patting him lightly. This time his entire face too was right all the way to the tip of his ears. It, it was nothing. I, I just really wanted to help you, so... He turns to Sarah's own two feet, too embarrassed to even look at my face. His ears keep twitching. Yet he never moves away from my hand. Look up at the sky and take a deep breath, get out my feet, and dust myself. Alright, guess I made up my mind. Huh, about what? Can't erase all the doubts I've accumulated in the past two years, nor can I ever recover my confidence in the blick of an eye. But, guess it can't be worse than not trying. God, what a, that, a quote for the ages, man. Like, so many people. Sorry, wow, that was loud. So many people need to fucking hear that. <laughs> I mutter more to myself than to uh, anyone else. Shun stares at me with a confused look. When I think about it, I can't help but smile. I guess I really do have great friends. That's really, that's really nice. I like that a lot. That was a nice little uh, interlude, I guess. I'm standing in front of a classroom at the second year's floor, waiting for a certain someone to come out. Even though class has ended, he has yet to leave his classroom. But just second years are gathered at the door, looking at me and whispering. I guess it really isn't common for a third year student to be here for long. I recognize a few faces from the tennis club. As they pass me by, they all call me politely. Oh, here's the boy! Here's the boy! He stops the boy at the door and stares straight at me with a look of surprise. He half jogs on my direction. Rex tennis bag across his shoulder. Good, he's brought his gear. Alexon, what are you doing on the floor? 
I've been waiting for you. You're free today, right? With today's practice cancelled, yeah, I am. Why? You're coming with me. Let's go. But you can't just expect me to follow you around. And yet that's exactly what he does. We go down the stairs all the way to the entrance. Even though Keiko protests a little, he doesn't actually disagree with me if or stop following me. In that regard, he's a very passive person. He really should try asserting himself more. Alex, at least tell me where you want to take me. We're gonna have a match, you and I. What? Kiske freezes on the spot, stunned. Are you serious? Yeah, think of this as a formal challenge, if you will. Straighten out, KQ runs around me, cutting me off. Wait! He stares at me's eyes, inspecting my face for any missing details. Kaikun, your expression is really scary right now. What brought this on? You're still doubting me. Well, I can't say I blame him. I've avoided doing exactly this since he first joined our club. He used to ask me about it all the time when he was still first here. Guess there's no harm in explaining it. I am turning you into my proxy for Tanabe. You'll be my, you'll be my practice partner from now on. You've got, no, you've got no problems with that, I assume. Not at all. Good, I've already booked a court for us at a nearby club. Our appointed time starts in half an hour, so we better hurry. Keisuke nods, walking next to me with a reviewed, reviewed, renewed vigor. Alright, time to look alive. God, the fucking death stare he had there. That was fucking crazy. We managed to arrive at the club with a couple minutes of stare. Not wanting to waste a single second of our low time, we both get changed as quickly as we can. Ah, oh, there they are. What? Sweet and June are sitting down on the benches looking at us with expectation. Sweet what are you doing here? Junku told me we had a match day, so I wanted to come by. Figured you guys he's an umpire. Didn't you say you were terribly busy? How'd you take time off to come over today? Well, I never, well, I never fist one of your official matches. I'm not about to start now. <sighs> this guy really is a headache at times. This isn't even an official match, you know. Alex, I know already warming up. Hurry up. Right, coming. I could set I my bag down next to one of the benches, grab a rack, and then quickly move me to the cords. Ugh. Uh, sorry guys, my throat's all mucusy. Flemmy, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. We do some light stretches, followed by a couple of minutes of just hitting the ball to each other. Okay, now wish you so far. Look at over the side, Sweet is already taking the seat of the umpire chair. Dune is also was intently from his seat in the bench I picked for myself. I wasn't really counting on the audience, you know. Alex, Stone, how do you want to decide who takes for a sieve? We both approach the net so we can talk over the details. Hmm, how about we just toss a coin? Just as I say that, Sweet she grabs a coin from his pocket and tosses it to me, snatches it in the air. Thanks, you alright with this cake in? I'm fine. Toss. Gekun's already switched to go mode. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> oh boy, this is fun. I'm sorry guys, I'm just talking to friends while I'm doing this for some reason. <sighs> I mean, he'll see the video anyway when it, when it comes out, but still, I, j I just... Mm. All right, yeah. I flip the coin as it's in the air. I call... Mm. Tails. Tails. Push the coin in the air, place it on my hand. Keiko appears at it, trying to see the result. <laughs> it's heads. Let me guess, you're gonna serve? Kekun grins, his malicious expression immediately sits alarms right on my head. Oh no. Now well received, go ahead and take first serve. Why? Keisuke's expression is sharper than I've ever seen before. And he's not the type to do something without a plan, I'm sure he's thought this through. I'll take this side of the court then. Keisuke nods, going to go into his position to receive. That, this is... Odd. All right, sorry now. Three set match. Alex is on the serve. All right, no point in doing all my concerns right now. So he's wanted to receive from the beginning. So what? 
I'll just, I'll just use my superior power to crush him. I'm sorry, I had to. It's so fucking anime. I bounced the ball on the ground a couple times. Four is my magic number. Checking my strings, on my shooting bouncing four times before serving. Guess I can't escape from my habits. That's, that's just a fact of life. Habits are always going to be there. As soon as I'm prepared to take a deep breath, start at full gear. Toss the ball in the air, hitting a fast serve into the center, center of the court. Where, where, where's the fucking, ma where's the fucking like thing? From the get go, this is already one of my fastest serves yet. Case is on phase, bashing, dashing to the ball before it's barely up my racket. Is re where, where is the? F oh, oh boy. His return is a bit shallow, but the positioning couldn't be more perfect. He's returned the ball squarely other side of the court, forcing me to run for him. <laughs> Literally again, he's already being mindful of my foot spots and angles. He sent the ball back to me in a way that I can't just hit it hard. He's trying to avoid a contest of power. Kikun reaches my ball. Unlike last time, he doesn't seem to be on edge at all. He's taking everything at his own pace. He slices the ball back to me. Because of the low bounce, I can't hit it best him to. Ugh, so annoying. Really locked in a battle of ground strokes, but this time he absolutely doesn't waver. He's different somehow. He's being more mindful of my strong suits and is playing to his own strengths. Instead of trying to rush the point and finish it fast, he's slowly but surely trying to grind me out of it. So I guess in that sense it's still the same as always. And yet, what's this feeling of unease? Heh! <laughs> Suddenly, Keisuke hits a hard ar arching lob. Why would I just send a lob over there? Crap, I hit it for a second due to my surprise. I just barely managed to return his shot, but I'm not, not in a good position anymore. If he tries to settle it here, maybe he could just start on the other side of the court to spot a potential winner. He hits a drop shot. Yeah, thought so. What? I run as fast as I can, reaching the ball in the nick of time. My posture's thrown to whack. Even after I hit the ball, I can't readjust myself to start running again fast enough. Crap. If he returns a power ball now... He lobs the ball back to the baseline? Crap! Again, I'm running a top gear to keep myself in the game. What is KSK doing? Doesn't he, doesn't he know he had the perfect chance to take a point just now? Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh my god, you're kidding. Right, I forgot about this. Alex and Ushahara have been stuck in that rally for a while now. I've lost count of how long it is already. Damn that Ushahara has picked up a few new tricks, hasn't he? What's Ushahara san doing? Even I can't even I can tell that he could have already scored the point by now. I was so absorbed watching the match that I didn't see Jun Kun approaching me. He's making Alex run, but not diagonally. He's also forcing him to go up and down the net. Come on, Alex, he's playing you. Fucking notice it already. Heh. <sighs> Stuck without knowing what to do, Alex just keeps hitting the ball as hard as he can, trying to power his way through. Instead of going for a winner here, he's trying to win in the long run. He's playing to tire Alex out, and of course the idiot doesn't notice this, so he just keeps playing at top here without a carrot for his stamina. So this is bad, right? Yeah, he's forced Alex into a corner and is now just applying enough pressure to keep him pinned down without actually winning the point. And even if he makes a mistake and loses the point, it doesn't matter because he's still accumulated on an advantage in the long run. The match has barely even started. It's already on the fucking worst case scenario. Rishara is setting a out mix of deep and shallow shots. So to his already vast reper repertory of spins and strengths, he's now at a depth as well. It's taking advantage of the entire court to keep control of the pace. This is the concept of his style completely actualized. Shit! Yeah. Alex sends a power ball in the corner of the court, trying as hard as possible to keep himself in the game. Come on, Alex, you have to have, been, you have, to have noticed it by now. How dense can you be? This isn't the Alex that I know. Stop messing around. Show them why you were Japan's number one already. That was cool. I read like a lot. That, that's like one of the things about this VN that I absolutely adore, that they actually switch perspective. More than Echo did, because Echo only did it once with like, the switching to Flynn's perspective for the for like the last two hours of his route. That was amazing. I love that a lot. It gave you new perspective.
the things. And this game has that shit all over the place, if I remember correctly. Shit, I feel like my legs are on fire. How long has the rally been dra even dragged on for? It feels like it's been forever. Kaku is repelling every single one of my shots. I am completely unable to mount the fence. When I think I finally have some momentum going, he returns an unexpected shot and completely breaks my rhythm. And yet, why hasn't he tried to score yet? No matter how I look at it, it's just, it's just too strange. He's had many opportunities, but he's yet to take the plunge. Is he afraid to counter it? It would make sense. If he overcommits, then that give me the chance to counterattack. But even then, this is just too... familiar. Why does his playstyle remind me of someone else? It doesn't feel like I'm playing against Keikun anymore. It's someone I was always played, and yet, it's different. He started, he started to employ many more angle shots. You literally told him, you're gonna be my Tanabe proxy. He's trying to be Tanabe. Fucking hell. He's trying to- yeah, I heard that. He's not focusing on, only on different spins, he's now using sharp angles to force me to run. He's trying to reduce any offensive space. Ruse my offensive space while I don't have much time to swing. He's cornering me by locking my power shots away from me. Locked in this endless back and forth, I, I decide to try something I wouldn't usually do. You usually do to try and break the stalemate. I launch a drop shot to try and break his rhythm. Even if it's a little bit, if his return is weak or slightly out of position, I can take advantage of it. His response is almost instantaneous. Kaikun rushes to the net with a speed befitting a wild beast. I barely have time to reposition myself when he hits a full power shot to the open side of the court. Vuh! This is where he decided to go for a point? Shit, I was too careless. Make a mad dash for me, the ball is long since the basketball running even close to it. Out! 15, love! His eyes look my way out for only half a second, and his expression is sharper than I've ever seen before. That's when it hit me. Ken Masaki. His style is without a doubt very similar to that of Kenma Sasaki. I noticed that he paid an ornament of attention to Sasaki-san when he came over to help us practice, but I never realized he he was trying to look from it. So Keiku knows the similarities in their styles. Could it be that he's trying to copy Sasaki-san? If that's the case, I should forget everything I know about Keiku's style and start trying to mount an offense geared towards Sasaki-san? No, that'd be stupid. Even if he's trying to emulate Sasaki-san, the reality is that Keikun couldn't have been practicing the style for long. He shouldn't be too familiar with it. Which means it'd be easy for him to return to his ordinary style. Right now, I need more formation. Let's see, how can I be sure that he's emulating Sasaki-san's style? Hmm. What the fuck? Tip, a type of tennis grip used to impart increased topspin. What the fuck does that say? Oh, Western Grip. It's like, oh. Tennis stall used to increase, impart increased tossing to shots, it's hard to control for long periods of time. Okay. Oh, that's right. Sasaki-san tried to favor the Western Grip much more than the others. As far as I can recall, KQ never used a Western Grip before. He always favored the Continental Grip, only switching to an Eastern Grip when he wanted to shoot a stronger ball. Try to keep that. Try to keep the rally going whilst keeping an eye on his grip. This should let me know whether he's copying Sasaki-san or not. I want to keep the rally going for as long as possible, but I also don't want to pass him an opportunity to score the point. Right now, I'm going to aim for an ace. If Keiko managed to catch, reach it, take it, take it from there. Keep it simple. No complicated tactics or play. Just play my own style. If a flat serve to the center didn't work, then how about this wide slice? Despite losing its speed, I'll make sure my shot more than makes up for it in spin and placement. I absolutely won't lose a guy my age when coming to my serve. Keikun misjudged the time of the ball, barely managing to block it. His return is both slow and shallow. This is my chance to go for it. What? I can hear Keikun's surprise voice as I dash forward, abandoning the baseline. I can't just let a sub chance like this pass when I'm seizing the initiative. Victory yours to the swiftest. Reach the ball just after it bounces before it starts dropping for the second time. I let my body's momentum carrying in my swing, trying to put as much power into my shot as I can. I don't have time to stop moving and stabilize my body, so I just do my best to hit in, hit in the air. A jump shot. Precision doesn't matter, just be careful enough so it goes in. Go! 
The ball flies out of my rack with force. Kisuke stretches himself as much as he can, attempt to reach, failing miserably. The ball hits the floor, close to the line, and scoops soils into the court's protective net. What? Was it in or out? Which one was it? I look over to Suishi, who's sitting there dazed. He eventually knows my eyes on him and snaps out of it. 30, 30 love. Yes! I just secure, securely take the point while sticking to my own style. Still, I won't be able to keep attacking like this so often. I was lucky that KSK shot was out of whack, but he won't have me many more opportunities like that. I still need to figure out a way to deal with this strategy, but for now, I'll just be grateful for each and every point. I didn't have much of an opportunity to keep an eye on this grip, but such things are a given. I'll just keep gathering a little bit of information every, every point. You return to regular positions. Usually, from what I've seen of Cake over the past year, he tends to lose his cool after a point doesn't go his way. So I'd hope to take advantage of his temper like I did in the, in the past match. But now we stand in place doing breathing exercises, filling with his racket strings. He's resetting his mental state after every point. If he keeps playing with total folk without being swayed by anger or frustration, then it's safe to say this is going to be a lot harder than last time. As play starts, I slid on my serve, taking a little bit, slitting a slice that bounces away from his reach. Kaken returns the ball deep to the other side of the court. Yet again, the placement of his shot is impeccable. I hit a slice at a sharp angle, giving me more time to reposition myself. I'll use this extra time to keep, a, keep an eye on his hands and see what type of grip he uses after he returns to serve. As he starts throwing the ball, I see him changing his grip. It's a western grip, so he has been copying Sasaki-san. He went from a style that Prem relieves the continental grip to one that employs the western Applying spins and controlling the ball precisely should be harder, but doesn't get increased power. But he does get increased power with it. Now I see what you're doing. All, I, all that's left is figure out how a way to adjust. Keiko takes advantage of the fact that my shot brought him closer to the net to return with a sharp angle of his own. The added power to his flat shot allowed him to, to clinch the point right then and there. 30 15. <sighs> Normally, Keiko would do a fist bump or something after winning a point. This time he simply wiped the sweat off his brow and got back to position. Damn it, it's hard not to visualize Sasaki-san when Keiko plays like this. Let's see, what can I do to deal with that? If I know he's playing like Sasaki-san, then should I develop countermeasures to deal with that? What if he just switches back to his own style? This line of thought won't get me anywhere. For now, I'll focus on dealing with his forehand slice. So far, it's been the most common shot of his. I'll try to keep the ball pinned to his backhand, and I'll work from there. Once again, take a deep breath. Let the excess tension go of my breathing. Once I serve, let the energy transfer from the bottom of my feet to the tip of my fingers. Move like a whip. I send a serve full of topspin to the side of his backhand. He shouldn't have time to pivot around the ball, and his point of impact should be slightly elevated. For now, I'll focus on disrupting the swing. As expected of him, Keiko doesn't seem at all phased by it, returning to deep slice on the other side of the court. But this ball wasn't nearly as powerful or as deep as his last shots. Alright, this just might work. I return another top spin heavy shot to his backhand. Even after he reaches it, even after he reaches, Keiko can't return comfortably. <sighs> Alright, just like I thought, the shot wasn't too powerful. It wasn't all too powerful. I can certainly take advantage of that. His forehand slice is the crux of his, of his current play style. If I can keep him from using it like he wants to, I can force him to reduce the power of his shots in order to keep his control steady. Right now I'm focused on forcing him to choose between power and control. Now that I have more time to respond to his shots, he can't counter me as easily. But once again locked in the rally, but this time I have the upper hand. I'll surely but surely grind him out until... Yeah! Kendu desperately reaches for a ball that is out of reach. The ball hits the protective net with a resounding wham. 40-15. Yes! Up a fist in the air, an excited cry. I try focusing my view on Keisuke's face to see if he's at all affected by his temper. But he's now back at the baseline doing stretches. Breathing exercises and stretches, huh? He definitely is trying to keep his temper under control. The idea of a perpetually calm Keiko is terrifying. 
Uh, let's see. So long as I can pin down, pin his, so long as I can pin his forehand down, I'll have an easier time dealing with his spin shots. But at the same time, I don't expect him to let himself be gimped by his backhand. This is Kate kind of combat, after all. He should know more about uh, than anyone than, that his backhand isn't as good as his forehand. If that's the case, I'm sure he has a countermeasure that for that already. Well, trying to predict what he'll do next is meaningless. I'll just take this one step at a time. I respond to whatever changes he makes in his twist play style without making any major changes to my own game, unless I have a reason to. Fifteen seconds! Ah! Sweetie's voice steps back to reality. That's right, I have to serve now. Focus on the point for now, leave all the thinking for later. I end with a powerful flat serve towards his backhand. Keikun immediately responds with a deep slice. As I expect, he's, priori he's prioritizing control over power. He's dishing out weaker shots in favor of making sure the placement's on point. I can, reach much, I can reach you without much trouble. Let's see, what do I do now? I'll just go with the top, top some heavy shot to the open court. My style will be very orthodox, but I'm confident in my power balls. <sighs> Keiko seems to be suffering the pressure on my shots. It seems as that he's given, given his all just to block my shots and return them. As the rally keeps going, the shots become weaker and weaker whilst I keep ramping up the power on mine. This goes on until... Yes! Jacob's posture crumbles under the constantly increasing tempo of the rally until he eventually loses his footing, hitting a ball towards the net and falling to the floor. Game! Alex won- Alex won, love. Shit, are you okay? Kiss gets up weighing me off. I'm fine, focus on your game. Oh, jeez. He moved to switch sides and notice Kiss's eyes are completely unfocused as he walk walks past me. I glance back at him after we pass each other and notice he's mumbling something to himself. Is he... is he already so focused he doesn't even notice me? Jeez, that's scary. Once in position, he takes hold of the ball, bounces on the floor a couple of times. As soon as he lock eyes, I feel a shiver crawling up my spine. My entire body tenses up. Kesuke tosses the ball in the air, his entire body moving quickly to hit the serve. I am sorry, I just realized I haven't even commentated on anything for the past, like, what? 10 or 20 minutes, like, I swear. When this game gets in intense, it gets intense. The sound of the ball hitting his racket resounds loudly. I start running as soon as I identify his, its course. It's just a regular topspin shot, I was worried over nothing. I threw myself to hit the ball after it bounces and... What? His serve suddenly sinks much faster than I anticipated. I have to move the last thing to hit the ball. My ball goes straight into the net. <laughs> Stand around rooting on my spot in a daze. Did that really just happen? His serve suddenly dropped out of nowhere. I try to look it over at Switch to see if I can give, give any confirmation of what I just saw, but I only see him gaping in his seat, completely at a loss. Hey, if you're gonna ref, give the call. Next. 15 love. He's as lost as I am right now. What on earth was that? That wasn't a regular top spin serve. No way it could have been. His serve wasn't like. Wasn't anything like this up until last week. How did he suddenly increase the amount of spin and it's so fast? This isn't anything I've seen Sasaki saw him doing. So he's adding original techniques to ones he copied. Ah, uh, nothing makes sense anymore. Try to shake it off. I need to get my mind back in the game. Focus. Oh, I, 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 I. Once again, Kiss Kiss sets himself up to serve, tossing the ball in the air. Keep a close eye on the ball. Is it the rapidly sinking topspin shot again? There it is. The ball suddenly sinks one more time. I try getting myself a vision I judge to be ideal to return. I return a million flies in that one more time. What? No way. I can't accurately judge how his shot works. So it not only sinks faster, but it also bounces even harder than regular topspin serve. But his posture doesn't look at all. The all that different from the normal Towson shot, but then why? 30 love! Keisuke strikes a quick fist pump and returns to his serve position. She doesn't meet a reaction. How is he staying so stoic? That's completely unlike him. Crap, he's running more and more Sasaki-san. I need to find a way to deal with that super top spencer before it deals with irreversible damage. Once more, Keikun repairs himself to serve. I visualize that drop and the increased bounce of his serve several times in my head, trying to grasp the timing to hit the ball. Keikun serves the ball and I dash intercept, and my racket strikes air. What? The ball flies past me, going 
I load my rack and, I, and my swing hits absolutely nothing. I see, I see Keiko and Chuck on the other side of the court, and as I look to the side, I see that Suichi and June are doing the same thing. Suichi attempts to cover up his laughter without much success. F 40 love. I can only cheeks beginning to flush. God, I was focusing so I was so focused on stopping that super Totsman serve that I completely forgot he didn't have to use it in the first place. I'm getting completely swallowed up by his pace. I hit my cheeks a few times. The sound of flesh eating flesh echoed like everyone jumped slightly. I take a few deep breaths, to doing a few stretches to calm my mind. Well, if Keikun has copied Sasaki, so I'll just copy Keikun and take my time to try and reset my mind state. But losing to my opponent is one thing, but I absolutely refuse to lose to myself. Even though that's what I've been doing for the past three years. What a way to get myself down. No, no, shake it off. I'm doing this match precisely so I can shake away the slump I got myself into. I'm throwing the towel for you I had a chance to actually fight, you idiot. I'm trying to pay closer attention to Keiko's movements leading up to his serve. A slice. I don't let myself fall for the same mistake again. I correct and corrected my timing so I can properly return to serve. Now that I got that out of the way, I can once again focus on my strategy to pin down his forehand. Aim towards the backhand. The ball soars past the net, hitting a strong shot that bounces high up towards his backhand side. Well, that alone isn't going to be enough to make him lose his footing. If I can at least nullify his advantage, he won't, be, he won't have his as easy time scoring. Kagan returns another slice, trying to keep me from getting to my sweet spot. It's just a mild annoyance. As long as he gets those sharp spins from coming out, he just goes back to being the same player he was before. And that player didn't give me any trouble last time. As our ally continues, I slowly grind an advantage. I don't like dragging the points like this, but I also can't let myself lose patience and try going for a winner that isn't there. For now, I'll just keep things steady until there's an opportunity to clinch this point. Keikun goes for a sudden break on, on his pattern, suddenly launching a sudden flash out aiming for the open space in the court. No, you won't! Unfortunately for him, I'm still able to make it in time. A single flat shot isn't going to be, isn't going to be enough to score on me, especially from that position. Crown, my aim wasn't so good this time. This is what he was going for. Shit, he rotated, he rotated around the ball. He's going for a forehand shot. Get ready for that sharp slice. Don't let him steal the advantage. Suddenly, Gagun has a strong topspin shot that towards the other side of the court. He had, he had the chance to try and resume his game plan, and he chose to ignore it. What's he thinking? I run for the ball, getting ready to hit it after it bounces. The ball suddenly drops. Shit, it's not the same topspin shot from before. I somehow managed to reach the ball despite the sudden drop, but I lose my standing because of the increased rise on it. My shot ends up out of bounds. Game Marushahara, count one to one. Shit, so his service is the only thing he can hit that. Isn't the only time he can hit that sort of shot. Crap, he's making. He's, he's still hiding a few opens down his sleeve. Looks like he can only hit that sort of top spin heavy shot using his forehand. Maybe he doesn't know how to hit it on his backhand, or maybe he's just not confident on it. Never mind that, I'm sure he'll just keep trying he'll just keep trying to keep me guessing. I'll just have to get used to it before it can be a huge problem. Won't make any big changes to my strategy to accommodate, but I'll be aware of it being a possibility. Jeez, how long is this gonna go on for? I don't even remember. I guess that now more than ever I need to keep his forehand hand in check. Let's see what sort of sir serve should I use. He doesn't seem to be reacting any differently to either of my serves. So I guess I'll have to try something I haven't used before. Okay then, I'll give this a try. I toss the ball to the air. I can see Keikun standing at attention as soon as I start moving, probably trying to figure out where the ball is going to go. Well, let's see if we can anticipate this. Before the ball reaches the peak of its rise, I hit it full strength. It's a flat, quick serve. How about that? Jeez. The ball bounces away, even Keikun frozen in place with no reaction. Oh boy. What? Fifteen love. Of course, so she just smiles. <laughs> uh, the dude's fucking crazy. Uh huh. Dude's fucking crazy. Okay, nothing, nothing. I expected him to catch it by catch it by surprise, but I didn't think it'd be this effective. Alex one case case zero. <laughs> my my quick serve might not be as fast as Morisaki san, but I can still catch some by surprise. You're not the only one with a thing or two up his sleeve. Let me see, Keiko started using that kick serve of just recently. It wouldn't hurt more variation of my serves, then at least I could make sure my advantage isn't lost from the get-go. Let's just give it a try. Try to impart as much topspin as I can. The ball lands above the service line. Vault. 
I guess that was too much risk trying to use a shot I've been practiced before. Let's see, I need a safer second serve that doesn't really forego the initiative. Let's see when the slice that bounces away from his reach. I get my serve aiming for it to slide away from his back hit. Hmm? In case he anticipated a serve his back hit and position himself out and made my toss. Shit, he went around the ball. He returns with a powerful shot to the open side of the court and I cannot reach. 15 all. Shit, I guess my tactic of focus on his backhand is painfully transparent to him. What should I do then? No, don't panic, I'll just power through it. Don't alter the way I play too much, but don't let myself become too monotonous. Hmm. My next serve is a top of serve that goes to his forehand. Even if it doesn't have a spin as his kick serve, I, I can still keep him anchored to the baseline. Still, without being able to consistently aim for his backhand, any advantage I've seen to be close to get is almost it's still lost the next second. I swear, this game really gets you invested in these fucking games, even if you don't understand anything about this sport. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> we end up blocking the stalemate like during the first game. Damn, even if he is just blocking me here, even if he's blocking me here isn't enough, isn't enough to get him to point. The constant running back and forth and going up and down the court would worry me down a lot faster than usual. If it goes on like this, I'm going to be running on a feed by the first half of the second set. I need to find a way to press my advantage or I'll end up losing due to lack of stamina. Once again, I decided to resort to a desperate strategy hitting a drop shot. It might have worked last time, but this time I'm not. I'm going to make a net dash as soon as I hit it. Just as I imagined, Gagan's response was instantaneous. I guess he already expected him to try something desperate when he keeps the game locked for too long. I end up being forced to make the first move and he already knows what that is going to be. He reaches the ball and, hit, and hits it with as much power as he can. I extend my arm as far as I can. It hit the frame! His return, bar his return barely hits the frame of my racket, making the ball fly back to his court. Keikun tries to reach it, but it falls just on top of the baseline. 30 low for a 30-15. That's not I don't imagine winning the point, but I'll take it. I guess from now I'll be forced to take more desperate measures like that to keep myself a bit of adrenaline energy before the end of the game. And no matter how much I try, I can't stop picturing Keikun to saki song. No, even worse, I can't even visualize Sasaki's face anymore. Instead, I keep seeing Takagi. Shit, my head is everywhere but the match I'm playing right now. I can't help but be reminded about how these, how these three are similar to each other. Fifteen minutes later? Okay. Jesus. Game Roshihara, 6-6, six six, tie break. I'm gasping for air, trying desperately to get enough oxygen in my lungs to keep moving. My legs feel like they're on fire, just moving is already hard. I should not be this tired just from one set. Keisuke is also panicking, but unlike me, he seems to be in much better shape. Damn it, there hasn't been a single break in this match's rhythm. On the contrary, if, you, if they keep, it just keeps jacking the pace even farther up. The way things are now, I'm not sure I can hold up and wait on a second set. Jeez. Hell, I'm not sure I can win this tie break. I take a short break before the start of the tie break, where I chug in a bottle of sports drink and massage my legs. Come oh, on, guys, don't give out on me now. Shit, looking to the side, Kaquin's focus is seriously scary right now. No matter what I throw at him, he keeps adapting to the changes I make in my game and learning to deal with them. Fundamentally, that's no different from how we used to play before, but the addition of those sharp angles, that fast slice, and that top spin that looks like that looks like an egg, just makes it too hard to follow. It's not like every individual technique has been honed to masterful levels, but right now his arsenal is just so big that I don't know how to deal with it all at once. Huh? Suchi climbs down from his umpire chair and walks up to Keikun. I'm calling the match off. What? You will jump into seats or seats at the same time. What the hell are you? Ugh. Suchi grabs hold of his wrist and pulls it up. You're injured, but you really think I wouldn't notice? Wait, what? Suichi, still holding Gekun's wrist, turns turns around and looks me dead in the eye. Yeah, it happened during the first game when he lost his balance and fell on top of his wrist. At first I thought it was just a slight sprain, but his accuracy ha has been dropping and he hasn't put as much spin on his shots. Wait, wait, I thought it was because I managed to hold him back. Not quite. Well, you were constantly hammering with power balls. Did keep him from hitting as well as he wanted to. The strong impact also kept kept putting pressure on his wrist. To 
To put it simply, he's been damaging his wrist as the match went further along, so I'm calling this match off now before it ends up causing himself permanent damage. No! Keisuke slaps Luigi's hand away, furious. You don't get to decide that. I'm finally in a place where I can stand against him. I have a chance of winning. How can you just, how can you tell me to just... You idiot! Kikun jumps back, scared at Suichi's sudden scream. Even Jun, who's far from us, reacts to it with the same amount of surprise. Neither of you are playing at your best right now. You're both suffering so. What the hell are you trying to prove, huh? You're trying to prove to us that you can ruin your tennis career for absolutely no reason? But... No buts. You're an athlete, not a child. The well-being of your body should be your main priority. What would you even stand by winning a match with... And completely destroying your wrist in the process. Are you stupid? But I feel fine. I can go up. Uh... No, you can't. Sweetie grabs his wrist again, making him wince in pain. His entire body curving as he tries to avoid the sudden movement of his wrist. You might be one hell of an actor, but you can't hide that you're hurting. If you want to keep up with this stupid show, it would be my guess, but I'm not efficient in this match anymore. He's right. Walk up to KK and put up my hand on his shoulder. I don't want to continue to win that you're possibly jeopardizing your career. At least get yourself checked out by a doctor and rest for a bit where you can try to continue. I don't want to be the reason you had to give, give up on tennis. But, but, I, but I could win. I was... Through to tears and clenched fists, his shoulders start to quake. He's so angry that he could start crying tears of frustration in moments. Look, you totally got me. I was only holding on by a thread, and I thought that was because I was starting to adapt to your tactics. But it turned out... To only be because you were in pain. If that weren't the case, then I, wouldn't have, then I wouldn't have stood a chance. You probably would have eventually broken my serve and taken the win. If you want to chalk it up as a win for you, I don't object. No, anything but that. He his shoulders sagged and lets his arms fall next to his body. I want to beat you fair and square. You never know what might happen in a match. You could have come up with a way to, do, to beat me, so I can't accept this as a victory. I... I want to put this match on pause. Can we get back to it where we left off once I get, get my wrist checked out and get be okay to keep playing? Try giving a big encouraging smile. Of course, I also can't accept the way this is getting left off, so I definitely want to get back to it later. Extend a hand, trying for a handshake. Keiko looks, looks down and hesitant for a second, but finally grab my hand and shaking it firmly. You better. I guess I should probably head for a doctor right now. Uh, I'll go with you. I appreciate the offer, but I'll just have my chauffeur take me. Okay. Oh, what the hell, you can come along. Yay! I'm gonna go inside use the showers. Do you mind waiting for me at the reception desk? Two completely absorbed conversation walk away from us until they are eventually out of sight. <sighs> Soon as they both leave, almost look collapse in one of the benches. <coughs> I knew it. I knew we were more tired than we were letting on. <laughs> Sorry, but our world is spinning right now. Sweetie sighs, pushing his face against the palm of his hand. You idiot! Sweetie sits right next to my head, in the small amount of room still left on the bench. I put the hand on my forehead and leisurely strokes my face in gentle strokes, staring into the court. I... I was worried today, you know? Hmm? Suddenly felt so cowardly I didn't have the courage to speak. I was fine off the desire to close my eyes and just doze off on the spot. At first I was afraid that I had said something that I shouldn't have and you'd be angry at me. Still, when I heard about you challenging your Shahar, I thought that I'd done the right thing after all, confronting you about it. All that, just to see this pit of performance of yours. I'm just sure you weren't even close to playing to your bench potential. You really think so? He slowly nods. I thought it couldn't have been a bad thing if it got you to just face your own fears, but you ended up trying so hard to get over your blood, you ended up playing worse for it. I didn't think I was doing all that bad. <laughs> Sorry, man, but you were. Missing up on obvious chances in school were completely was near cool, shots less accurate than usual, just everything was off. Arushar definitely approved it on the other hand. I'm pretty sure he'd have beaten you if it weren't if you weren't injured, but then again, only because you suck today. I guess the mind really is a tricky thing. Here I thought I was being fierce. 
confusing crudeness for fierceness. That which that's what you were doing. You should just acknowledge your problems and try to work through them slowly. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Duly noted. He taps my floor with an index finger, getting up from the bench and looking down at me. All right, then. I think we should out as well. Oh, come on, Mom. Five more minutes. <laughs> Sweet, she laughs with a warm smile. Sorry, no. You're exhausted now. You should head home and rest. But don't make me yell at you, too. Getting up right now. I rocket jump out on my seat, making him laugh again. Could you put my things back in my bag and ready to head out? Do you want to just head home? I can deliver the keys to the front desk. I was hoping we could walk home together. Sorry, but I can't. I kind of stepped on some students' council duties to come here. So I should probably head to my vice president's house and get things smoothed out with him. Well, all right. I'll leave, things to, I'll leave things to you, then. Here's the keys. Toss him the key about, which he easily grabs from the air. All right, then. I'll head to the front desk, and I'll go, then we'll go to the train station. See you tomorrow. See ya. We walk in different directions, waving at each other as we got further apart. God, I feel like I was run over by a truck. Guess there's still a lot I need to work figure out before I get my back on my feet, huh? Oh, okay. End of that day. It's now Saturday. Interesting. Oh, boy. Well, I'm saving. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.